Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna uh, play the Chess Genius Android app versus the Millennium Chess Genius Pro. Now, just give you a little uh, a background here. This is the original program that was in, in the app that was written by uh, Robert Lane that played Kasparov in 1994. That same engine that is in this app is in this Millennium Chess Genius Pro chess board. It's just probably a toned down version of it. According to the SSDF rating list, which you probably should see on the screen right now, the app here is rated around 2400 plus and the Chess Genius Pro uh, chess board by Millennium is rated 2100 plus. Now, as you can see, we have a position set up here in the board, an opening. And so what I did was I, and just to give a little bit more background for the people who don't know, um, when typically when people play engine versus engines, you know, the, uh, for rate, you know, the big time uh, tournaments and rating lists, they, they don't give the engines a typical um, opening book. What they do is they have what you call a test suite. And in that test suite, it's a special opening book that um that um has specific openings sometimes it might be a gambit sometimes it might be dubious openings but but the idea is that you don't want to give the engines the typical openings in an opening book because they may play the same kind of boring stale position so you want to pick something kind of dynamic and representative and give both sides some good chances to play something exciting so that's what I did here. And you should see a link in the, at the bottom of the description of where I got my test suites from. They're free, you can just go download them. I picked uh, for this uh, opening is what you call the Sleeman defense. And to make it fair, since Chess Genius app is rated around 2400, I gave it the black pieces and I gave the Millennium Chess Genius Pro the white pieces. Now the, Sle now, now the Sleeman defense, uh, rises after one e4, e5, two, knight f3, knight c6, three, bishop b5, and black plays f5. And that is the basic position of the Sleeman defense. There are variations of this. There's even some sacrifices and gamuts involved. But you don't really see the Sleeman defense at top levels uh, because it's kind of a, it's a somewhat playable slash almost dubious opening. So it gives, you know, in this case, uh, the weaker side a, a chance to kind of balance the game out. So with that said, I'm gonna tell uh, Chess Genius Pro to go ahead and move and let the games begin. So right now he's thinking, and out by the way, the time control here is five, game five plus three seconds increment. And um, so he went uh, D2, D3. Let's go ahead and move. See what old chess, uh, the app over here is whipping up. Okay, he just wanted to go, all right. So far so good, everybody's staying solid. And um, I mean, uh, okay, knight, he's bringing his knight to c3. And so far, so good. Everybody's developing what you'd expect. Um, I, I expect an exciting game, at least like not some typical boring type, you know, stuff. So we'll see. Okay. First, capture the game. Yep, pawn takes pawn. That's exactly what I would have done just to keep that, just to keep a pawn in the middle of the board. So black does have a middle, a center of the board, you know, with two pawns, but black uh, what, 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 and he does have an open F file, but he kind of weakens his king side a little bit. So there is something, oh, I didn't move yet. There, there's something to be said, you know, for that. And um, black may give up the bishop pair at any moment. 
who knows? We, we, we just got to wait to see a little bit more. I'm hoping to see a good, exciting game here. Okay. Brought his night out. Typical developing move. Nothing wrong with that. That uh, D foul is semi open, which could be used to uh, Black's advantage uh, at some point. And that is uh, bringing his bishop out. All right. And I mean, so far again, I, I, I'm almost thinking now, now I'm gonna tell you what's gonna be exciting here. We get white the castle queen side and black the castle king side. I mean, this could um, potentially be a fantastic game. That looked like the direction that they're heading in perhaps here. Okay, so white goes ahead and castle king side, okay. And I obviously we're expecting black to castle king side. Um, okay. Now if he give up the bishop pair here, um, I mean he is kind of strengthening black center if he does that, but at the same time he's creating an isolated pawn, but an isolated pawn on the edge of the board is not that big of a deal, right? I would have I would have not made that trade as well. Uh, okay. Developing here. And we're not quite fully developed yet. White is one step away from fully developed and black is two steps. And I would say fully developed uh, generally just means that all your pieces are uh, out and your rooks are connected. Generally speaking, that's what um, fully developed means. And by virtue of that, you could kind of say the opening is when is when uh, the opening is over when you know the rooks are connected. But of course, we know that ain't true. Because, but just generally speaking, if you know if you're trying to teach, say a a, a kid or a friend or something like that, uh, you know you, you you can kind of teach them how to how to. Um, Think about the openers and things like that way. Okay. Not too bad. I'm kind of getting relaxed here on the time. So I'm trying to keep up with the time. So if the time does run off once that obviously we're gonna keep playing the game. But I really wish I could have set it to like to like five plus five. because that would have given me more time to actuate moves, but five plus three, because again, the limitations on Chess Genius, the app, I can do that. I can make a five plus five game, but on the Chess, the Millennium Chess Genius, I can only uh, pick five plus three. They have like set uh, time controls that I, that I can't like um, customize, if you will. So three seconds seems to be okay, but five would have been better. Right, let's see what we got here. I'm expecting Bishop. That's kind of like a and this is interesting. Okay, we expect uh I mean I just expect Bishop take bishops. I don't see why would you do anything else. I expect pawn take pawn. Obviously, that that's not really. But now, now, now we got some interesting stuff going on here. Now he did. I can say he induced the weakness, but he did kind of make a misplace his knight, sort of, for a little second. But we'll we'll see what he does with that. The black knight was kind of sort of misplaced, but he rerouted it. I mean, uh, 
He rerouted it. I mean, he can go to F4, H4 at some point. I mean, that's it's a lot. Can be done here. Right? Okay, queen here. Okay, looks like we may get a get an opposite side castle, which would be really good. Castle. All right. I think things are starting to heat up here a little bit. White does have a pretty good night there, but for the moment it's not doing much, but it's a pretty good night though at least. He's 2A4, he's going on the attack here. Going on the attack, okay. A little protection here. Maybe he's gonna go B4, that'd be pretty good. And this is a blitz game, by the way. Now, had I have done this for 10 minutes, um, it might be a different story, but... But again, I, I, again, I... Uh, more for the sake of trying to keep the video at a pretty good length for, so people can, uh, you know, watch the whole game. But again, I'll be making longer videos. Again, this is definitely going to be um, D2 to F1. Okay. Kind of almost ready to start threatening mate over here. F1 to G3. Okay. I think things are starting to heat up here a little bit. Hold on. Probably night takes. I mean, that's the wrong or the real. I mean, it could go. Looks like the Chess Genius Millennium Chess, I mean, the Millennium Chess Genius Pro is in a little trouble here, but sometimes computers like this can have some crazy defense, though. I'm really paying attention to the game here, so it's kind of. Okay. I mean, there's only one move here. Right. He's he's coming at them all in. This might be over kind of quickly here, but then again, again, like I said, you just never know. Uh, these computers sometimes have some crazy defense on stuff like this. Yeah. C two to C three, and again, time has run out on the app for me. Although time hasn't run out overall, just um. Again, it's, it's it's hard, you know, to kind of, you know, unless you're going to play a very long game. And again, that's what I think I'll start doing. I, I I'm try I'll try to do like a ten plus something game, ten plus five or something. Although they don't have ten plus five controls on the chess 
millennium. So what I do is, I think my other board does, and I think I'll try to do more uh, competition with that. And the other ones, B2 to B4. And seeing how it goes. And maybe occasionally I do like a longer game with these two boards and speed up. Because again, the limitation here is that a Millennium Chess Genius Pro um, has just fixed time controls. There's no like customizing or manipulating them like with the um, with, with the app and with the board over there. You can kind of make whatever time controls you want. But this is still interesting though. This we, at least we get to see an attacking game here. At least we do get to see an attacking game. And uh, let's see what else we got here. Bishop here. Okay, now he's got a concrete threat of uh, Bishop H2. Concrete threat there. I wonder how he's going to meet that. I mean, he could just go knight f5. Okay, that's a pretty good uh, defensive uh, maneuver. Because I forgot, you know, that the that the uh, that the rooks over here are very. Okay, this looks like it's going to be quite over here soon. Because if we took that, that would have looked like it might have been. I had to go back and review that. Oh, it's queen a6, and uh, knight here would have been hanging. Yeah, that's what would have happened. And then. Then with the threat of rook, rook h8 to uh, to uh, h1. Man, this is a serious king here now. He he is not playing around. This king here is getting it good. Okay. Of course he's gonna go rook, take a rook, yeah. That's I mean that's the only real move here. A little bit slow on the move and I gotta get better with operating my um doing this operation here. Cause I really like doing this type of stuff here. So I have to get better at this, but this is just, you know, me just starting out doing this and I've done it before. And again, I've never been that good at it, but I think, I think 10 plus five would be a good, um, would be a, be a good, uh, I wonder why he just gave him that pawn. That's weird. I just want to see how nice this mate is going to look in the end. It's probably going to be something crazy. Being that he got him out in the middle of the board like this. Okay. Let me hit check. Pretty sweet, though, I gotta say. I heard the defense of the computer sometimes is really crazy. And uh, the bishop's looking nice, the black bishop's looking nice. But I think what I'll do is I'll have to play this game against. Uh, uh, I'll have to play this against um, the. King performance board over there so I can set the time control because again I think I need like five seconds like a 10 plus 5 game would be good to really 
flesh this out here. And again, that wasn't too much to commentate on it in this game. Everything seemed pretty straightforward because it a two to f two. Because again, I mean, the opening was a little interesting, but uh, we got to saw some dynamic play here, I guess, if you will. So he said, I want that knight out of here. D takes E5. Hold on, D takes, uh, hold on. Oh, D takes E7, sorry, yeah, that wasn't what I would do. Obviously, King is going to take that. Okay, C4 to B3. It's funny how the king was on G1. Now he's all the way over to uh, B2. <laughs> okay. That's almost made. That's pretty easy to deal with. That's a few checks, and his king will end up on c3. I mean, c6. That's still a pretty good defense. Don't even give him, you know, another f2 to f3. That's going to be a close. Yeah, bishop here, check. Almost mate. I mean, it kind of has to go to um, A2 here. No, I can't go to A2. You kind of got it. Oh, man, that is going to be a... Uh, kind of has to go here. And then queen to... say queen to b3 he moved instantly I could not much he could do about that but he's giving up his rook I mean he has no choice I mean like what else to do he don't even take it yeah that's what I say the king will end up on c6 anyways so I mean there's like nothing you can do to stop check Checkmate. He'll probably take on c7. Okay, he takes here. I mean, goes goes there, and I just go king to b6. And he could take. Probably better to do that. And I mean, F2 to B6, <laughs> just giving up his queen. Oh man, well, let me get a piece here. Pawn takes, set that down. And we have checkmate. Very interesting game. Uh, I think, uh, again, that the time controls really reflected um, 
the play for, especially for the Chess Genius, uh, Millennium Chess Genius Pro. And although it's only, it's a 20, when I say only, quote unquote, I'm not saying 2100 is weak, I'm just saying in computer terms it is, versus another computer. Um, yeah, it played some very dubious moves early on. And, um, but at the same time, I, mean, I played this computer here several times myself, and it played some fantastic chess, I mean, especially towards the human. I beat it. It beat me more. I beat it. I say I can beat it probably one in every, I say I probably beat it about a third of the time, maybe a fourth of the time. And so, uh, anyway, with that said, that wraps up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed that little video, and I'll try to uh, do more stuff like this in the future and do it in a better way and have more control of what I'm doing and make better time controls. And I'll keep using test suites so I can make exciting games. But anyway, you guys have a good one, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.